Hey there, fellows. So as you can see, laid out on this wonderful machine, I've got a neat-looking apparatus. Now, this is an older car, old enough so that the earlier examples to roll off the assembly line didn't have brake boosters. Not like we need it anyway, given that we have this lovely device, consisting of a receiver, compressor... Now, I would have preferred the compressor to have a bit more flow, but we'll figure something out. All right, well, since this car doesn't have a brake booster, let's fit it with an air brake system. Now, we have already put some thought into how we go about this, and the rear axle shouldn't be an issue. As for the front, that might get a bit tricky. We're going to be figuring it all out as we go along. As it is, you have to apply considerable force to the brake pedal, and hopefully this air brake system will remedy that, and make it so an emergency stop doesn't require so much effort. Anyway, so... We have the receiver, compressor, valves. We sort of understand how to set it all up. So let's throw it together and do some testing. We make a pneumatic brake system for Alada. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Here is what we're looking at, guys. It's an interesting system. Now, we didn't really do anything that sophisticated here. The principle is about the same as on a large commercial vehicle. Let me run you through the whole thing. We still got a spring on top of the pads. The brake cylinder is also still in place, though it's only there for support. As for the lower support, that we decided to remove. Over here you can see that we have this lovely pipe. And on the tip of the pipe, we have a lobe. Now, the reason that's there is for the pads to push out when you twist the pipe. This really doesn't require all that much travel. Now, on a commercial vehicle, you've got two pneumatic cylinders, right? And the links are meant to do this in order to push the pads out. Now, we'll be running just one cylinder. It'll push down on the makeshift link of ours and activate the brake pads. Now, the thing here is... The cylinder turned out to be a bit too long. So we did have to hack the underbody of the car. That said, it'll be in the trunk, so you won't be able to see it from outside. You know, I think the return spring might be a bit lacking. We might want to replace it with something that's a bit more robust. Use one that'll bring the link all the way back up, to prevent the pads from rubbing and overheating. Okay, let's see... Can you spin the wheel for me? Looks like we'll have minimal travel. Okay, spin it. Okay, now try turning it. Okay, I'm no cylinder, but I can still put down enough force. Even just the two should work pretty well, I reckon. Now let me show you what we've done here. Now this one made our brains hurt. It took a while to figure out how to set up an air brake system up front. We were throwing around a bunch of different ideas. But no matter what we came up with, we kept coming back to a setup similar to your traditional hydraulic system. In the end, we decided to go the hardcore route. As in, simply drain the brake fluid out from the front channel and keep the stock brake cylinders that are already in there. 
especially since this particular model has two pot calipers up front. Converting that to front-wheel drive lot of spec, machining a piston, fitting a seal. We keep coming back to square one. Anyway, so we've got a compressor in the cabin. And here you'll see a few lovely air tubes. Air is routed to the front and to the rears via this here splitter. And this is a relief valve to release the pressure when you ease off the brake pedal. <laughs> now another thing that took us a bit of time to figure out is the pressure regulator. That's the device that allows you to adjust the pressure inside the system. Now fortunately we do have a couple of crew members who are very handy with a welder. Hell, I'm a welder myself. Anyway, here's what we've done. That over there is an old-fashioned oxygen regulator. A rather massive one. So yeah, we took that, removed the screw that adjusts the pressure, then we fitted a rod and connected it to the brake pedal. And so now the harder you press it, the higher the pressure in the system. The regulator has two chambers, and so it equalizes the pressure. So again, the harder you push, the more pressure you generate. I expect the system to work beautifully. Okay, so we've got it in there, it's connected to the pedal, and the compressor is taking up the space where you'd usually have a rear seat. The receiver is right next to it. Yeah, all of the pieces are in place. And it ought to be 107% functional. Let's do some testing, shall we? I've hooked up the ground, the compressor is on. Now I need somebody to get behind the wheel. Oh uh, yeah, we'd better spin the wheels to see how the system even works. You know what we might have forgotten to do? We forgot to hook up a pressure gauge. A manometer. Let me turn that off. I mean, in a commercial truck, you've got a manometer placed right here up on the dashboard. Because that's something you want to keep an eye on. Because the pressure can drop to zero, leaving you with no brakes. Eh, whatever, we'll figure something out. Let's do this. Okay, let's try this out. And the testing begins. Brake. Press down harder. There we are. That sounded just like a truck. Try again. Let go. Wait, why is the tank so quick to discharge? Oh, you were barely touching the brakes? Come on, push them harder. What's up? Come on, press them hard. It was a bit lazy that time. Okay, everything is ready, we are good to go. The compressor is a bit noisy, but what can you do? Time to go try these pneumatic brakes out. I can't really tell where the pressure is currently at, but in any case, by the time I get to the gate, it will be somewhat adequate. Without a doubt in my mind. Let's see. Wow, just like the truck. Here we go. Awesome. I think I'd better bring the speed up. And see, and see how effective these brakes are. Let's try them out. Now, for some reason, I can't lock the wheels. We'll find out why that is shortly. Hold stop. It does break, yum. Yeah. I mean, they don't work like on a race car. 
But the brakes are doing something. You'll be alright as long as you maintain a reasonable following distance. Second gear. Going downhill and now? Tremendous. Ah oh man, they placed the manometer in a spot where I can't see it. I would have much preferred it to be in my line of sight. Wow, they're performing pretty decently. And as per usual, it's something we cobbled together without going too crazy. Oh my goodness, that's loud! That's definitely one of the drawbacks. Yeah, it popped off. Now I've got a ringing in my ears. It's getting too warm, we need to use a different hose. I am so not used to a lot of making that psh noise. This is neat. Can your car do this? Check it out, I press the brake. Now I want it to. You want it to? We can hook you up. We've developed a proprietary system. I'll pay you a visit after work. Sure, by all means. Yeah, well, the stopping power really isn't comparable to the stock hydraulic system. It takes a bit of time for the air to fill the system up. Yeah, you really need to be using gigantic piping. Which is something we don't have, unfortunately. Curious to know how many pushes it takes to deplete the oxygen tank. Perhaps this compressor could even cut it? Do you think it'll be able to keep the system full of air? Can you check the pressure for me? Five and a half. See, I told you it's not quite up to it. The tank is too small. Here, you try it out. Okay, so here's the situation. Now, I do have to admit that these weren't super effective, and the car wasn't stopping on a dime. But then we were using parts that were just lying around the garage. A regulator, a pump, a small pneumatic cylinder, some hoses. And that's about it. By the way, about the Moses. You guys saw that the air coming out from the receiver, I mean to say from the compressor, was getting really hot. And whatever material the tubes were made of couldn't cope with the temperature. I mean, that is fairly easy to rectify. Overall, this is something anybody can do in their garage. By the way, yeah, it was also making a pretty fun sound through that relief valve when I was letting go of the brake pedal. I mean, just hearing it was already pretty unusual. Because you're not supposed to in a car like this. Overall, the brakes worked fairly well, even if they weren't bringing the car to a screeching halt. But they were definitely making it decelerate, so... Anyway, guys, this worked, we're looking good. You asked for it, we made it happen. If you maybe have any ideas on how to improve this, uh, go ahead and share them. I would love to listen to your feedback. Hit us up in the comments. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later. The Lada Airbrake project was a success.